2022, we released 52 new episodes, including this one. As we head into 2023, we thought it would be fun to do a little retrospective. And we will talk about some of the biggest mic drops from our guests this year. Consider this your TLDR, or I guess in this case, your didn't watch or listen. All right, y'all, so to start us off, the financial truth that we're trying to keep in mind in 2023 is that this is a long-term game, right? But if you believe that the global economy is going to continue producing new value over time, the stock market will rise over time. And so continuing to dollar cost average into the market during the turbulent times is so important. It's like that Buffett quote, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. I feel like that is perfectly encapsulated both the volatility in the stock market this year as well as how I feel looking back on the have fun staying poor crypto mania of last year. The second financial truth heading into 2023 is even if the housing market does cool down a little bit, you have to run the numbers for yourself. Calculate all of your recoverable and unrecoverable costs as best you can and decide if it's worthwhile, like if it's something you really want once you get the full financial picture because it's probably going to be the biggest expense you take on in your life and it's it's not a purchase to make lightly. To the extent that fear can be a motivator that like fuels you to take your finances seriously, great, but you don't want to let it get in the way of taking action. And I think more broadly, just recognizing that the economic ocean in which we are all paddling our little personal finance canoes, it's really choppy right now. So to the extent you can give yourself grace and celebrate the progress you are making, I think that goes a really long way. The way you earn will almost definitely impact the way you approach your finances, right? So I think our takeaway here for 2023 is if you are self-employed or you have variable income, having that larger oh shit fund will help smooth out those lower income months. But if you're not self-employed and you do have the reliability of a steady paycheck, advocating for yourself in your current role and, I mean, I would add to exploring those scalable side hustles if that interests you that you can maintain while you rock the nine to five thing can help increase your income too. And hey, if you are in a position where you have a predictable income, take advantage of that predictability, set up the automatic transfers to the 401k from every paycheck or even to accounts outside of your employer sponsored options that if you know the same money is coming in every month, just take that decision off the table, make it once and move on. Taking all of these kind of counterpoints, if you will, to what we often hear in the mainstream into consideration as a final truth for 2023, I think I would wrap it all up by saying there's a lot of juicy paradox in this space, right? It makes it a fun one to explore because it's true that things are more challenging now than they were in, say, the 1950s financially, but it is also true that going from zero dollars to a million dollars in 10 years or fewer, if you're a couple that's earning median to like, I would say slightly above average wages, it's actually more achievable than someone might think. It's true that money can be complex and emotionally loaded, but it's also true that your own perception of your ability to master your money may be negatively skewed and you may be far more capable than you're even giving yourself credit for. So anyway, one thing that I've kind of been navigating this year is just making room for more nuance, that things are rarely as simple as they appear, but that we can always come back to, okay, this is the context I exist within. Now, how can I focus on adjusting my individual approach to adapt to it? Mm -hmm.